Hey everybody, this is Pastor Tyler Baker of Valiant Baptist Church, and we are located in the Jacksonville, Florida area. So I'm coming to you with a quick video answering the question of who wrote the epistle to the Hebrews. Now, the book of Hebrews is an amazing book. It is definitely my favorite book in the New Testament, if not my favorite book in the entire Bible. The book of Isaiah definitely running a close race with that. And uh, the question of the authorship of the book of Hebrews comes up all the time. I've read about it in commentaries. And, you know, I've heard it preached when people are preaching through the book of Hebrews. Uh, I've read full articles dedicated online to answering this question of, who is the author of the book of Hebrews? I've heard people, you know, uh, um, you know, uh, give try to attempt to give all different types of theories of uh, Barnabas, you know, to Priscilla. I believe it says on Wikipedia. There's so many different opinions on this subject, and I want to make a video where I am definitively answering the question of the authorship of the book of Hebrews. Who authored the book to the Hebrews? Uh, now, I want you to turn with me to Hebrews chapter number one, and I want to look at the title of the book of Hebrews. The titles came from the translators. Obviously, that's not inspired scripture, nor are the chapter delineations. And the full title from the King James Bible translators is this, the epistle of Paul, the apostle to the Hebrews. And I am going to be proving without a shadow of a doubt uh, that the apostle Paul was the author of the epistle to the Hebrews so I want to begin in the conclusion, as I said, in Hebrews chapter number 13, verse number 24, the Bible says this, Salute all them that have the rule over you and all the saints. Then it says this, They of Italy salute you. My very first point is that the author of the book of Hebrews was in Italy when he wrote this book. So notice that he makes the statement there, They of Italy salute you. So he is with they of Italy, and he's telling the Hebrews, Hey, those that I'm with... You know, the Italians, the people in Italy at least, they are saluting you. There's only one person that is mentioned being in Italy, uh, and that is the Apostle Paul. He is the only one that is mentioned being there. I want you to go with me to the book of Acts, Acts chapter number 27. Acts chapter number 27, verse number 1 says this, And when it was determined that we should sail into Italy, they delivered Paul and certain other prisoners unto one named Julius, a centurion of Augustus's band. So notice that he's traveling to Italy here. This is Paul. He arrives in Italy. You know, he's given a house in Italy. And most of his letters actually are written when he's in prison. His epistles that we have, you know, uh, a part of our New Testament Bible, they're written from Paul while he's in Rome and he's in prison. So notice there that Paul is the one in Italy. So that's point number one. And point number two is that the author was actually in prison in Italy. So I want you to go back to the book of Hebrews and look at Hebrews chapter number 10. We're going to look at verse number 34. He says this, For ye had compassion of me in my bonds, and took joyfully, and so forth and so forth. So notice that he says that the Hebrews had compassion of him in his bonds. So the author is in bonds, but to make Point one and point two kind of work together and to build complexity and to further even prove that this is Paul. He is in Italy and he is the only person that is in Italy. That's Paul. And he's the only person, obviously, that's in Italy in bonds. So there is, you know, two strong points that went put together, you know, build, you know, uh, pretty much fortify uh, the authorship of the book of Hebrews, I believe, right there. Now, point number three is that the author is sending Timothy, that the author is actually sending out Timothy. Look at Hebrews chapter 13, verse number 23. It says this, Know ye that our brother Timothy is set at liberty, with whom, if he come shortly, I will see you. Christians that are familiar with their Bible are aware that Timothy was Paul's protege. In Acts chapter number 16 is where he meets Timothy. He takes Timothy under his wing. And Timothy stays with Paul the entire time. And the only time he's not with Paul is when he's out on missions trips that Paul is sending him on and Paul is managing. And yeah, Timothy will be with other people, but it's other people that Paul sent to go along with Timothy. The, the, the books 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy are written uh, from Paul or by Paul to Timothy. Not only that, I want to focus on the literary style of the author. And I'm going to give you two points here. I want to first talk about his farewell in Hebrews chapter number 13. Look at verse number 25. The author says this, grace be with you all. Amen. So notice that grace be with you all. Amen. I want you to look with me at Titus chapter number three. 
In T Titus chapter number three, verse number 15 at the very end, grace be with you all, amen. And a variation of this is used by Paul in almost all, or in all of his epistles. Every epistle he uses, you know, great, the, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, amen. I believe that that's how he words it. So it's just a variation of that, of that exact same language. And that particular phrase that is found in the book of Hebrews is only found in the book of Titus, which is also authored by Paul. I'm going to give you another point of his literary style. I want you to look with me. I'll give you two points, actually. Go to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter number 12, verse number one says this, wherefore seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. So notice that the author there likened the Christian life unto athletics or specifically unto a race. There is only one author of, of uh, you know, a New Testament author that likens the Christian life unto athletics or, or even specifically uh, a race. And that is the Apostle Paul. And he does it a couple of different times, but I'll give you the best example. 1 Corinthians chapter 9 is a great example. And it says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 24. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth a prize? So run that ye may obtain. Not only that, I'm going to give you something very cool, very distinct to the authorship of uh, you know, the book of Hebrews. I want you to go to Hebrews chapter number one now, verse number five. It says this, for unto which of the angels said he at any time, thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Now that was a quotation from the Old Testament. And the author is getting ready to quote another verse from the Old Testament. And he makes a very distinct phrase. He says this, and again, saying the Old Testament says this also, and again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. Watch this also. Verse 6. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all the angels of God worship him. And then he keeps going on in verse number 7. It is a distinctive of this author's literary style. It's not found in any other books in the New Testament except the book of Romans. Go to Romans chapter number 15. Romans chapter number 15. Romans chapter number 15 Verse number nine says this, and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, as it is written, for this cause I will confess to thee among the Gentiles and sing unto thy name. Verse 10, and again he saith, rejoice ye Gentiles with his people. Verse 11, and again, praise the Lord all ye Gentiles and laud him. That just means praise all ye people. Verse 12, and again, Isaiah saith, there shall be a root of Jesse and he that shall rise and so forth and so forth. So notice that that is a distinctive to uh, the Apostle Paul. And we know that the Apostle Paul wrote the book of Romans. That's why I referenced that book. We also know that the Apostle Paul authored the book of Titus. So these were all books that the Apostle Paul actually reveals his identity. So we can compare that and we see that there are distinctives to the Apostle Paul that don't show up in any of the other you know, uh, uh, books in the New Testament. And then the other point is this, and this is an extremely strong point. It's something that I actually noticed very recently. And that is that the author of the book of Hebrews gives personal information about the time of his conversion. And he reveals that he was not converted. He was not saved at the time that Jesus had risen from the dead. And even shortly thereafter. I want you to look with me at Hebrews chapter number 2. Verse number three, it says, How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord, and then it says this, and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. And it was confirmed unto us, right? In this particular state. He says that, that the Lord preached it first. It was spoken by the Lord and then was confirmed unto us by, notice this, them that heard him. So he's not a part of that group. He was not a part of the original disciples that were sent out by the Lord to go and confirm the message that the Lord preached. He was actually still in the, the, uh, you know, the group of the audience, those that were hearing the disciples preach. Now, Paul is also, again, the only option when it comes to this. When you look at the other authors that we can nail down that authored books in the New Testament, you know, like the Apostle John, you know, John Mark even, you know, uh, just all the other people, Matthew, you know, who is referred to in, uh, uh, you know, the Gospels. They were converted before this. 
The Apostle Paul was the only apostle that was saved much after and was still a hearer of the word even after Christ had risen from the dead and the disciples were preaching uh, the gospel. The only person that fits this particular uh, description as well is the Apostle Paul. So to go back through the points, and these are extremely strong points. Number one, the author of the book of Hebrews was in Italy. He was in Rome. The Apostle Paul is the only person in Italy. The person who authored the book of Hebrews was in Italy. Yes, they were in prison in Italy. And Paul, that's the reason why he was in Italy when it was mentioned was he was a prisoner. He was sent there you know, because he had appealed to Caesar. So those two points are extremely strong. Point number three is the author is sending uh, Timothy. Paul is the only one sending Timothy. Timothy was exclusively mentioned as being Paul's protege. Point number four is that the author's farewell is distinct to the style of Paul. Not only that, his literary st style in a couple of different ways was distinct to Paul's style alone. And then on top of that was the timing of the conversion of the author. Whoever the author was, they were not saved, you know, uh, even after the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and while the disciples were preaching. They still heard the disciples preaching to them as they were among the Jews. They were unsaved themselves, and then they were converted later. The Apostle Paul is the only one that fits these descriptions. These are all extremely strong points, and this just, you know, proves, I believe, without a shadow of a doubt, that the author of the book of Hebrews was, in fact, the Apostle Paul. And it makes perfect sense, because if you look at Romans chapter number 9 and Romans chapter number 10, uh, the very first couple of verses, he is just pouring out his heart about how much he wants the nation of Israel to be saved. And uh, he talks about even to the point that he would wish that he was accursed, you know, for his brethren's sake, that they might be saved. Now, it makes perfect sense that he has such a burden for the people of Israel that God would allow the Apostle Paul to author, you know, that particular uh, epistle, you know, to his brethren according to the flesh. Uh, and then on top of that, you know, the great obedience <clears throat> of the Apostle Paul. He's the greatest evangelist. And, uh, you know, God is a rewarder. Uh, you know, of, of hard work. And I believe that these are all reasons why it would make perfect sense why um, the Apostle Paul wrote the book of Hebrews. Now, why didn't he declare his name? Now, of course, when he wrote to the Hebrews, they already knew who he was. You know, Timothy was delivering it. They knew who was delivering it. So they knew who he was. And you know, one of the reasons why I believe a lot of things like this are in the Bible is to make you study your Bible and it makes you love your Bible more and it makes you see the great and the vast consistency. You know, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. God bless you and have a good day.